We are very pleased to have Jean Manford and her daughter Suzanne here today. Um, this is something that we've looked forward to, that people have asked about, and we're very glad that she could come uh, to be with us. Uh, it is, Jean has been here before, but it was some years ago, and so for those of you who weren't with us in PFLAG at that time, uh, this is a special treat, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, Jean was in New York a couple of three weeks ago at the gala there, celebrating 30 years of PFLAG. Uh, theirs was the first chapter to meet, and uh, PFLAG's taking advantage of that um, and creating celebrations around the country uh, during this year. And that was the first one. Uh, and with that, I'd like to introduce Jean Manford to you and her daughter mm -hmm. Suzanne. tell her story, and uh, Suzanne should feel, depending on the mother-daughter relationship, happy to interject. I'm always happy. <laughs> Jean. She's my right hand. Good. Excellent. Sounds like a wonderful thing. Uh, well, I don't know. I guess I start at the beginning, but I'm not quite sure when it all began. Uh, Morty, when he was 15, asked my husband and me if he could go to a psychologist. And we were really surprised. We couldn't understand why. He, uh, I had uh, his teachers always told me how wonderful he was. Uh, he became president of his GO in school, and uh, he, the uh, assistant principal, said he thinks he's in my place. He, acting like assistant principal, and one teacher said. He, send him to the best college, he's going to be a uh, senator someday. But my husband and I agreed, if he felt he wanted to go, we said, sure. And uh, uh, some time went by and we didn't think anything about it. And the psychologist called us in, and uh, my husband and me, and told us that he was gay. Well, when Morty realized that we knew, he was furious. Uh, he was just so angry, I couldn't say good morning to him. He'd think I was saying something horrible. He, he was just so upset. And then uh, they, I must have been in seven, early 72 uh, or late 71, he and a group of young gay men went to the Hilton Hotel where the uh, Inner Circle met. They were a group of city officials, people who worked for New York City, and uh, they were, people were passing out leaflets uh, complaining about the treatment the police were giving and the, uh, well, it seems that some of the men in the inner circle got up, and among them Michael May, who was head of the fires, uh, firemen's union, and he was also a Golden Gloves champion. He started to punch Morty and throw him down, kick him down the escalator. The police stood by and did nothing. Well, I was really upset. Morty ended up in the hospital, and I, I was saw just... a picture of him in the paper, and I didn't recognize him. He was, he was severely beaten. He wasn't just hit. Uh, and uh, I sat down and I wrote a letter. First I tried to call the New York Times and they wouldn't even talk to me. They hung up. I wanted to know why they didn't carry the story. And then I wrote a letter to the New York Post and it was printed and I complained about the incident that my son and other gay men were assaulted by city, these uh, city officials. And it appeared in the paper and the next day, Morty called me and said, Mom, you can't imagine all the phone calls I'm getting, all the congratulations I'm getting, that a mother would advertise she had a gay son. Well, of course, after that, Morty and I were very close. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the following June, they, he asked me, it was 1972, he asked if I would march with him in the it was then called the Christopher Street uh, Parade. And I said, well, okay, but I'd like to carry a sign saying why I'm marching. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. So he wrote on a 
big piece of uh, cardboard, parents of gays uh, unite in support of our children. And I took the Long Island Railroad to Manhattan Penn Station, and then I got to, had to take a subway to the village uh, where the parade started. And when I got on the train, it was pouring. The rain was coming down in buckets, but I got out of the subway. Uh, when I got on the railroad, it was pouring. When I got out of the subway, the sun was shining, and I'm walking along with a paper bag and boots and everything. <laughs> and so people started yelling as I passed, just screaming and applauding. And at first I thought, Dr. Spock was in back of us. He was marching with the veterans of Vietnam, <laughs> and I thought they were applauding him. But then I realized, Modi said, no, Mom, they kept asking me if I would call their parents. And so as we walked along, uh, we talked about, well, how about getting, you know, a group together and helping anybody who is, you know, wants to come. And uh, that was in June. And then the following March 11th, uh, we... Uh, we had the first meeting, and Morty and Barbara Love, his, who was on that picture, was supposed to, she was supposed to take care of the women and Morty the men. And he put leaflets in all the bars and bookstores, and uh, well, that first meeting, there were probably 20, 22 people there, some gay men. And uh, we decided on meeting, uh, once a month, I think it was the first Sunday, or the last, I don't remember now. And so that's how we started. And it took a long time. There were some meetings where just my husband Morty and I, and the minister of the church who, who offered us the room, free, uh, was there. And if one or two people came, we felt we did pretty well. And in September, and again in that picture is Mar um, Sarah, Montgomery. Sarah Montgomery, and uh, she called me in September and she told me a sad story how she had lost her son because he and his uh, lover had uh, lost their family and uh, had lo uh, lost their jobs rather, I'm sorry. And she wondered if she could be any help. She said, she told me she was 75 years old and she didn't know if she could be any help. Well, she was marvelous. She spoke and she was very, just a wonderful person, very helpful. <coughs> and she joined in September and uh, gradually uh, it, it began to build. The, uh, the Ashworths joined and the Benoffs and uh, it got the group got stronger. People moved to other parts of the country or, and started other groups. And, uh, I think Betty Fairchild started one in uh, Washington, D.C. I think she was the second one, but I, I'm not sure because I was on television. My husband and I were at least 40 television shows. <laughs> and. Uh, so uh, I was in one in Washington with Betty, and there was another woman there. She had been on a uh, television show with her family called An American Family, and it turned out she had a gay son. And they had... Sh that was the Louds? What? The Louds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, that was the beginning now. <laughs> what else? <laughs> Well, I, just going on the television shows, people would come. Uh, Mom was a school teacher, and uh, people would come over to you and thank you and know that if you said it was okay because she was a great teacher and they loved her, and it was okay, it was okay to be gay, it was okay to love your child. People would call all hours of the day or night. I was in college at the time just to talk. Just to talk yeah. on the phone. One of my students called me and said, well, if Mrs. Manford has a gay son, then I don't have to worry. I'm all right. 
and another, uh, my husband was working in a clinic at the time, and uh, one of the nurses came to him the day after the march and said, thank you, Dr. Manford. And uh, so it, uh, it got around. Uh, the, th the thing was that my mother was never afraid. She loved Morty. She was never afraid to say that she loved him. It didn't matter that he was gay. She was proud of who he was. He was always a great kid. He was always the leader of whatever he was involved with in his schools. And I, when she marched, he realized that she loved him and, it, and she, he realized it didn't matter. He was, we were used to watching, or he was used to watching his friends being beaten up and ostracized from their families. And uh, people, I, I think mom's biggest strength was that it didn't matter to her. She loved her child, as most people do, but the fact that he was gay or straight didn't matter. She loved him. And Well, a lot of the uh, young people didn't even tell their parents because they were afraid. Uh, they didn't know what the reaction, and of course we found as the time went on that a lot of parents who came uh, felt as I did. Uh, they just didn't know. A lot of them, of course, in those years, a lot of them came and cried and blamed the husband or blamed each other and threatened divorce, and uh, we felt that we had helped a lot of people. And of course, you see it every day in your group. Yeah. The police would uh, detain him and uh, call. He was under 18 and he'd be in New York. Or the, he, Morty had been the leader of many of the early gay rights, the Gay Activist Alliance in Manhattan. There was a group that met in the firehouse. I'm not sure there were several groups. He was always a... He was president of the uh, gay activists. He was one of the founders and president, and uh, people didn't talk about it at that time. And just the fact that she would talk about it, I think, helped people. People were able to come and talk to her. And as a teacher, she was gentle and accepting, and these are obviously, are, all of us are people who love our children, and some of our children happened to be gay, and it was okay. And that was the strength, I think, that my mother gave other people. We never had a formal meeting when I started it. it uh, I usually opened the conversation and uh, at some point and uh, get, you know, got people to talk. And uh, there was no president or vice president. And, uh, somebody, one of the women, I think it was Edith Ogalski, uh, passed around the hat at the end of the meeting. Was, she for was the years, first one to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for years, we hadn't even really collected any money, and uh, then I guess in the 80s, after I lost my husband, I was on television with Amy Ashworth and I think um, Ray Kameny, and as we were walking out, uh, Ray, uh, Amy said to me, "Don't you think a man ought to be in charge?" Well, I never be president. I never even thought about making it that formal. But I said, sure, and Dick Ashworth was elected president. Uh, and he and Ma Amy went ahead and did a great job with, the, and I felt they, you know, they really knew how to run an organization. I had no idea, you know, how to make it grow or strong. You know, <laughs> any questions? Um, Jean, it's great to hear, um, hear you. It's really, I can't hear you. It's great to hear you. It's great to hear your story. There's parts of it that I, I really didn't know that Morty sort of um, really was a part of his draw that brought you actually to the Christopher Street um, parade. Um, I was curious, what was your feeling after that parade? When you, when you were finished um, and, and all the, the, the hoopla was over, what, what were your feelings as you had marched um, with him? Oh, well, I was really elated. I mean, the people kissed me and hugged me, and uh, I just felt, you know, we had talked about starting something, and 
And as a matter of fact, I made the front page of the New York Times. They, they mentioned it that time. <laughs> They came to the house and interviewed her later. There's a beautiful picture, a big uh, article. At that time, my daughter must have been about three, and they quoted my dad as saying, for grandchildren, there was quality and not quantity was fine. <laughs> but they, uh, they came around. She appeared on a number of different uh, TV programs, and they often had a foil, some homophobic foil. And <laughs> One time where I was there was uh, directly after Morty died. He died in 92 of AIDS. And I don't remember the man. We, Mom was on Ger Geraldo. And there Geraldo, was, yeah. Geraldo. And there was some petty politician who was trying to make him a name for himself. And I, I don't recall his name. But uh, he attacked homosexuality in my mother and my newly dead brother. And, oh, the audience just about mobbed that man. <laughs> they had abused. Yeah, they told him to shut up. He said, I, I was sitting in an airplane, and I looked at the obituary, and there was Morty. I said, shut up. I got up and yelled at him, don't you dare mention his name. And uh, the audience said, kept it, be quiet, and the Geraldo wouldn't let him talk. <laughs> Geraldo had his good points. That's his good <laughs> I, I wanted to follow up with uh, an, another question, sort of as I, as, as I come out and my parents really benefited from PFLAG, um, and as they came into their own and came out about my being gay, and then have been with family and friends, um, they had some losses um, because of their advocacy for me and, and for their support of gay people. And I wonder for you, when, if you were to think about where the loss has been in this journey, what comes to your mind? I'm sorry, I, I don't know. What kind of losses? Do you mean in terms of friends? Friends or families, or family of... I never had, I never lost a friend, and all of them were supportive. As a matter of fact, I have one friend, she was a kindergarten teacher in my school, and uh, she became very close very good friends and uh, as the years went on I um, realized that her son was gay and Maud, in fact Morty told me he was uh, his, this young man he t I said where does your mother work and he said PS 32 and uh, the young man says that's where Sally works and uh, Morty said is Nikki gay? And he said yes, and so was his sister. Now, my friend had two gay children, and she never mentioned it to me. And uh, when I was in New York, she's That's now... Just this last week. Yeah, she's 91 years old now. And uh, she, I visited her, and she never met, again, she never mentioned... Uh, well, she knew that I knew about Nikki, but she didn't know I knew about her daughter and because I never said a word to her. So she said to me, well, there's, you never t uh, told anyone ex uh, about Nikki ex uh, except one person. I said, if you mean Mar Rose Marie, she's the one who told me about Maria. And she said, oh, I thought you told her. And it's the first time she met, no t really admitted to me that her daughter was gay. <coughs> now, uh, she knew uh, you know, that I was working, that I was didn't mind being publicized, but she would, wouldn't tell me in all those years. Now, you know, it, probably I've seen her for the last time, and uh, she admitted it to me. But friend or family would come over and tell us stories about experiences that they had growing up, uh, homosexual experiences. These things had never been talked about before. And uh, my, your principal, Mom appeared in the paper, or my parents appeared in the paper, and uh, they, she came and warned you about it? Or? Yeah, it was on the front page of the Times again, one of the marches, and she said, uh, parents are going to complain about this. And I looked at her and said, my professional life is one thing, and my private life is another. She never said another word. Did, your, did the parents ever complain? Speak up. Speak up. I have trouble. Did the parents ever complain? 
No, not that I know of. In fact, one little boy said to me, my mother knows about you. I had been on television. <laughs> That's about all I heard from the children. We lived in a conservative neighborhood, and we did have, there were a lot of children on the block who uh, were from, not from the public schools, but from the <coughs> local parochial schools. And they threw rocks, and we also had... Once, they, once or twice, yeah. And we also had things like Jew written on the front uh, uh, dur during a Christmas thing. There, there were those kinds of incidences, but it was never family or friends. It was, there were good people, <coughs> were my friends as well. I, if I lost a friend, it was, I, I never noticed it. It wasn't worth it. <laughs> but, um, but my mother has good friends, and if anything, it was stronger. It's never a problem. I think many of us have a similar experience that our, uh, that our, that our friends <coughs> we come out to are, you know, are not, are not, um, they don't mention that they find this objectionable or a problem. Um, and they do ask, you know, after our children, at least in my experience. Mm -hmm. um, but there might be some cooling, you just never know. I, you know, in other words, I don't know if yeah. I've lost a friend. It hasn't I been that uh -huh. obvious. I never noticed it. In fact, I lived half a block from the school, so I would bring some of the teachers at lunchtime. I'd bring one at a time home and have lunch with them and uh, talk about it. And they never, as a matter of fact, I was asked to speak in Washington to a, at a Senate subcommittee, and uh, I was going to make a speech. And um, also, they asked me to sign some bill had a bill, a petition signed, some friend took it away from me and said, uh, I'll get it signed for you, and she got most of the teachers in the school to sign it. Wonder. Yeah. So I, I never did have a bad experience with friends. That's great. How has it been for you, Susan, um, as the daughter of a mother <coughs> who's been out there marching in New York streets and organizing in an area that isn't um, or wasn't certainly a popular cause at the time. I, growing up, really wasn't aware of homosexuality. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that my brother was. It was, I lived in New York City. There were a lot of people that were different, lots of races. I never thought about it. And when I found out that my brother was gay, I was surprised. I, um, he, he wasn't what I thought was a stereotype of what a gay person was. And uh, when my mother uh, marched, I loved Morty. He was a terrific guy. He, uh, I, I didn't always agree with him in the things he said and he did, but he was a great person and he did his best. And I ended up marching. I, uh, I had a great time. I have some pictures of myself. My daughter, at uh, three and four years old, carried signs in the marches. She said, "Let's see. My uncle is great, but I would uh, is gay, but I would love him any stash way." Uh, and um, I would uh, say, "I my uncle is gay, but I would love him." Two, four, six, two. eight. I, he, I'd love him even if he was straight. <laughs> but, but this was a four and five year old, and she spoke about it. She, um, he, he, of course, sat and talked to her about politics, and we were in Vietnam at the time. And she'd be this little kid in the uh, grocery store, and people would be talking about Nixon or in, in. Um, Nursery school, the teacher says how she, they, she asked the children if she knew who was the president, and she'd get answers like, yes, he's the father of our country, and he loves us. And Davriel would raise her hand and said, and he bombs babies. And, <laughs> and, and people aren't allowed to love each other. More do we talk to her about, and we all would. You're allowed, you're allowed to hurt people, but you're not allowed to love people. And she so just she, became a doctor. Uh, 
She graduated, uh, finished her residency, and she's in practice now. And she has two little girls who have friends who have uh, two mommies or two daddies. It's, it's growing up uh, with it for her was perfectly normal. For me, it was a surprise, but I loved my brother, and I did everything I could to support him. And, and for part of that time, I was in college, and when I came home, I enjoyed the marches. I thought they were great. I never marched in a parade until I did that, and that was great. I, I, well, he was a good guy. Um, in one uh, parade, I was w walking with Morty, and a friend of his came, Arthur Bell, and they started talking, and a policeman came over to us and said, move on, don't stand here. And I stood, and I thought to myself, the nerve of him. I opened my eyes and looked at him. Like he was a fifth grader. And he turned, he turned away <laughs> and, and he walked away. Like a fifth I thought to myself, I'm a, I'm a citizen. What right has he got to tell me to move? <laughs> And uh, once, I think, they were, we were picketing something about we were doing the Carter when he was running for president, and a man started uh, arguing and yelling at Morty. My husband had just had a stroke, and he had a cane, and he went over to the man like this with a cane <laughs> off his head. <laughs> the guy luckily moved away, and there was no incidents. Morty uh, was very active in the early gay movement in New York, or not the, the gay movement, when, uh, particularly after Stonewall, I guess it wasn't the early gay, but he was a very non-violent protester, but he was uh, adamant. He was at Stonewall. This gentleman would like to speak. I hope you realize that all of the United States, there are thousands and thousands of people, of which I'm one, for which the flag is our family. It's the only one we have. We've been rejected. This is where we're accepted. 